What's up, geniuses? Welcome back to For the Record. I'm your host, Rob Markman. I'm still keeping my ass at home because social distancing. Don't listen to your president. Don't listen to them protesters. They're wilding out in America. Keep your ass home. Flatten the curve, man. We're not out of this yet. But the show must go on, all right? And this guy, Drake, gives us plenty to talk about. He just dropped his latest project, Dark Lane Demo Tapes. It's a mixtape compilation, I don't know, but it includes previous release joints like War, Chicago Freestyle, When to Say When, some new joints, of course the things that leaked previously, and I brought a few of my friends so we could come just talk about it, break it down, talk about what we liked, what we didn't like. First up, we have Spotify's head of urban music. It's my long time brother, this is my friend in real life, man, Carl Cherry, man, what's up? What's going on, man? Thanks for having me, it's been a minute. Nah, man, it's been a while, man. Thank you for joining, man. Next up, we have On Air Personality. From Hot 97, amazing DJ. She's an artist in her own right. I'm not going to lie. I'm waiting for it to get warm. I wish I could go outside because she has a dope record that she dropped a couple years ago called On and On with Tory Lanez that kind of feels like summer. I got new music coming out. And she got a new album coming (laughs) out, Megan Wright, DJ Megan Wright. What's up? (laughs) What's going on? What's up? What's up? I'm really happy that I could uh, do this with you, finally. Thank you. I, I love you with your hair up, too. I just want to say that, man. With my headphones? Because you also had to wear headphones, so I was like, I got to put my DJ headphones on. <laughs> DJ Megan Wright is on brand. And finally, we have co-host of Grassroots Podcast. I love talking music with this guy, man. He has really dope takes, man. No stranger to the show. Brandon Hall, what up, man? Welcome. What's going on? Thank you guys for having me again. Nah, of course, man. Thank you for doing this. You know, listen, man, it's Drake time, man. Um, You know, and... I ain't gonna lie, it's not like too much going on, and, and we were like, man, what are we gonna talk about this week? And then all of a sudden, we get Dark Lane demo tapes, and it's like, all right, cool, man, we could always do a Drake episode. Um, he was on Lil, Ye- Lil Wayne's Young Money Radio. He was talking about how this tape is like a precursor to his next album, which is coming in the summer. He said that he was gonna drop a single, but he felt like giving people more of a body of work might be more fulfilling than a single. I'm just going to go around the room, Brendan, we can start with you. What were your first impressions of this? I'll be completely honest. I think, I think he dropped the record. I think he dropped the single and it didn't do what it was supposed to do. And I think that this project is to not so much save face, but to kind of just play it safe. I think, I think Tootsie did numbers, right? It, it did what it was supposed to do. And I know this sounds crazy. Y'all all looking at me with the thing, but just hear me out. Just hear me out. Because it, it went number one. <laughs> It went I understand one. that. I, I understand all of that. I get it. I know I'm, gonna, I'm about to sound nuts, but just follow me. I really feel like while that record did and, and went number one, it didn't do God's plan numbers. I think Drake was used to doing God's plan numbers. I think that this record was initially, well, not even initially, it was intended to do something via TikTok and everything. I think it did numbers and it did well. I don't think it did or, or what it was supposed to do to Drake's, Drake's standards. And because of that, that's how it ended up on a demo tape. <laughs> Like, it, it just doesn't make sense to me. It makes sense from a marketing perspective. Okay, that's a good point. Um, Megan, I want to go to you because, I mean, one, as a music fan, as an artist yourself, you have all these different perspectives, and you're on radio. Um, two questions now since uh-huh. um, Brendan brought it up. Did Tuzi Slide do what it was supposed to do or what you think Drake intended to do, and what was your thoughts on the project? I mean, I'm sure that something can always... You always think, you know, you put out a song and now we're in this TikTok phase. I don't really understand completely how it starts. Like, I don't understand if you take a song and you give it to like one specific person and then they create a dance and then everybody does the same dance. Or if you just give it to like the TikTok world and something kind of like navigates. I don't 100% know how it works each time. I do know with, you know, this particular song, of course, because, you know, he's shouting out the commands and what you're supposed to do that you would have expected it to be you know, this massive, you know, tick, you know, whatever. But I don't think that that means it performed poorly. Mm. No, I don't think it performed poorly. You know? That's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is... I don't think it performed poorly. No, no. I think it performed very well. Let me be clear. Mm -hmm. um, this, This worked for him. It worked given what the project came to be. I think that this was going to be a single for his project. I think that it went number one, just not number one to his standards. And because of that, it ended up on a demo tape with an, a bunch of leaked records. I think this is it's just good. That, that project will still do well because of the streaming numbers and because of what Tootsie Slide did. But if that record was really, really big, why did he not hold that to then put it on the actual album? But That's my question is, I don't know, maybe this is a Carl question or a label. Like, what difference does it make? 
Like if it if it does well and you put it on this or if you put it on the album, those numbers in a sense still count for like where they still count. So yeah. what difference does it make if it's on this project or if it's on the album? I, I think it's optics and it's also marketing, right? There's a right. difference between a number one record for one week and 10 weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, I completely understand what Brandon is saying because Sissy Slide was number one for a week, literally right. a week. Like if yeah. you look back to the last number one records that Drake had on Hot 100, right. they all were there. I, I don't have the correct numbers, but in my feelings, it was number one for at least 10 weeks. I think God's plan was like the same thing. Nice for what? The same thing. Remember mm-hmm. 2018, he run the charts for half the year. He broke Usher's right. record. Uh, yeah. In his defense, I don't think anyone's able to maximize a record right now. I was going to say, the uh, climate right? too. Like, do you the think that's different? Thing? Right. Especially like a, a club record, uh, a, a TikTok record like that. People assume, okay, well, uh, everyone's going to be doing challenges because we all have this time in our hands. No, like the, the cars are driving around. You're supposed to hit a record. You're supposed to get the viral video of a club in Atlanta all doing a tussy slide in sync. Mm-hmm. To all help market the record. Right. So, um, my answer would be yes and no. Like he he did well with the record, but he he wasn't able to maximize it. Right. Mm-hmm. But Tuzi well, slide too. Y'all keep calling it the Tuzi slide. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not the Tuzi roll. Tuzi, Tuzi, Tuzi. Tuzi, Tuzi, Tuzi. I kind of think like I feel like he says Tuzi. But I did, right. I did, I did say that's my bad. I did say Tuzi. I've been saying it for the longest. My boy says it that way. It's kind of like the new Tootsie Roll, though, if you think about it. <laughs> but, 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 but I, I like what Brandon was saying, though, because to me, remember, he went from clearly teasing an album to all of a sudden, here's this demo tape. So it, I feel like a lot of artists have been watching the climate. You know, somebody like Drake, you need the full experience to drop your album, right? You need the, mm-hmm. the live experience. I feel like a lot of people... At first, everyone was hesitant when we went into quarantine. They're like, well, I don't know what this is going to be. I'm going to wait it out and then possibly drop. And then when we started having all these cultural moments, I think people started being like, well, I can uh, capture magic in a bottle to some extent. And like, I'm going to just drop and see what happens. I'm a Tory Lanez, the baby, whoever, right. right? But um, a lot of artists have been hanging back just to see what happens. So I feel like that was... Uh, something he dropped to test the waters. Yeah, yeah. I, mm-hmm. I, I, think, I, I think Drake is fully, and my take on this, I think Drake is fully living in the moment. My one kind of theory on this, because there's so many songs that leaked prior to this that he just put it on the compilation, I think is, is a reaction to that as well. Drake is such a big artist, right? Um, and he's been here before. How are Drake records leaking in 2020 to the magnitude that they were leaking prior to this project? But they're, they're so tight. That team, I feel like, moves almost militant musically, yeah. right? Like, how are we getting so many leaks? It kind of reminded me of the lead up to the Carter Three with the Wayne leaks. Mm. Mm-hmm. And I wonder if this is Drake's version of that. I want listen. I wonder if Drake is is letting these records leak. I was gonna say That's when, what I, I, when I when I when I hear when I hear leak, I don't I don't hear leak the same way that I used to hear leak. Like when yeah. I when yes. I used to think leak, I'd be like, oh my gosh, let me go find it, you know, whatever. Now when I when someone's like a record is leaked, I I hear it now as intentional. Like I never hear mm-hmm. it as on accident, you know. Right. But what mm-hmm. I can say is that as far as like the project in whole, like there's probably only one Drake project that I don't like. And I, the reason I'm saying that is I remember from when I first, you know, started DJing, it's like there are certain artists that I grew with, you know? And so Drake is one of those artists that I've grown with because I've seen from like when I started and when I started in the industry, it's like he's first started dropping his mixtapes. And so all throughout the years, it's kind of like we've grown in a sense, you know, you kind of grow with certain artists. And I, I, I believe that like when artists take less pressure off of the whole album thing and it's a mixtape or a project, I oftentimes like those better because it's mm. almost like they're experimenting more. They're doing things on a, on a, and taking certain chances that they wouldn't necessarily do on an album because they're like, this is my album. This album has to be perfect. And then when it's a mixtape or it's a project, it can kind of be certain things that are either from the heart or, or come with a certain kind of like, okay, I just wanted to try this. I just wanted to do it. And, you know, when we have projects like that and mixtapes, like I, I, I love it. So, right. you know. Like, yeah, it, it, you're right. Cause we judge it a different way uh-huh. based off of how it's presented. Yeah. But, Again, Drake just being 
Drake and and dude isn't in, super intelligent and super strategic, right? We might not judge this like his album, right? But he might very well get his tenth number one album at the end of the week when it gets right. Yeah. Album, right. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So he reaps the benefits. Well, mm-hmm. well, the fact that he JoJo dropped, Meg Beyonce dropped, uh, who else dropped uh, this Friday? And Doja it, Cat, and, Nikki, um, and Do- mm-hmm. Doja Cat, Nikki, Nikki, right? All of these artists dropped, big artists, right? The fact that Drake would still be able to still come out number one with leaked reference records from SoundCloud and then maybe three, uh, yeah, 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 leaked, air quote leaked. Um, and I'm rolling with you, by the way. I'm 100% certain leaks are no longer leaks. These are all planted. This is all mm-hmm. marketing, but whatever. Um, the fact that he was able to do that and still somehow be number one after the, some of these songs have been out for like five and six years, I think it's crazy. It, it really is a testament wait, wait. to him as an artist. You notice I, when something's on streaming platforms, though, it's a different kind yeah. of like people forget that they've already been out. I don't know that a lot of people heard it. Like, you yeah, know, you, you, you got to realize how, how I, I think now more than ever, there's this divide between the casual music listener and, and the person who goes and seeks out and finds, oh, a new joint, a new Drake joint link. I'm gonna go to the random SoundCloud to find who has it. I'm gonna go to the random YouTube page and I'm gonna hunt this joint down, rather than people who need to have it all in one place. And maybe Carl could speak to this. It's again the the power of streaming to corral it all in one place and get everybody on one page and on one accord. You know what I'm saying? It, it, I, I wanted to go back to the leaks because if I'm not mistaken. He messaged those songs, uh, Chicago Freestyling, When They Say When, as leaks on his Instagram. Right. So he's telling you. <laughs> like, right. he's, it. he's putting it out there. But, but I think you're right, though. I think a lot of people haven't heard those records. Like, we're, we're, we're inside. I think we forget we're in our little bubble sometimes. So I think a lot of people still haven't heard that. Yeah, I, I see people reacting to stuff like, like Florida, um, from Florida with Love. And and it was Losses. like you didn't hit law. I was like, y'all didn't hear this right? Like we heard this. Yeah, this is all old. This is all old. Um, Pain nineteen ninety three is one of the songs. Um, actually, blowing up on Genius, it was the number one lyric search thing on Genius this weekend. I, my guess is because nobody knew what the hell Playboy Cardi was saying in his verse, mm-hmm. <laughs> so they wanted to see what the lyrics were. Um, nah, but it was a song that a lot of people were, were looking forward to. Um, what did you guys think of the song, particularly um, Cardi's verse? I feel like a lot of people are, are talking about Cardi's verse. Well, within two seconds of it playing, I was like, okay. Even without paying attention, I was like, this sounds like a Cardi song. Within yeah. like two seconds, you know? Um, I just, I love Cardi as an artist. I love the way that people kind of, it's, a, he's, it's interesting. It's like the way that people kind of like, I don't want to say wait for him, but it's like, there's like a mystery behind like what he's doing and then, okay, now he drops and then now he's here and you didn't really realize he was going to be there and then now this is happening, you know? And it's definitely not how I expected him to sound, um, you know, but I appreciated it and I liked it. It's not one of my personal favorites, but I appreciated it and I liked it. Uh, I'm not going to be the one to intellectualize a Playboy Cardi first. I, I'll go to pitch. <laughs> yeah, that's, you know, I, I, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I'll go to Pitchfork for that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, uh, um... So I'm not going to pretend, you know, that, that I can dissect it the same way I can dissect a Drake or a Kendrick verse. Um, he's all energy. I can tell you, though, that when I hear him on a Solange uh, record, I don't know what he's talking about, but I think it's incredible. <laughs> I, I guess for me, that's my measuring stick as uh-huh. uh, for a, a Cardi feature verse. But I, it was fine. It was, it's a vibe. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 you, you just that, I was gonna say, yo, the only thing I could say, it's a vibe. I didn't understand what he was saying, but I liked what he was saying. Does that make sense? Like, it made me feel good. No. He could have been cursing me out. I love the record. I, it's I don't, energy. It's, it's a cool record. Yeah, it's, it's all cool energy. It's all but isn't energy. that interesting that it's like you kind of you don't really know or understand or whatever. You're just like, hey, it's Cardi and he's here. <laughs> you know, did, it's did like you, we don't even. You're just like, yeah. Did you see that meme weird, this weekend of music of the white kid who's like? Did you see this video? I'm the only one to see it. It's like one of these YouTube reviewers, and he's just like, yo, did you hear what he said? Yo, the myth. Oh, my God, the myth. But I think he's clearly being like um, sarcastic and shit. Um, yeah, that wasn't for me. I, I was cool. Right? Like, no, o- o- only because, and it's not even like. I knew that wouldn't I, be for you, Rob, honestly. It's not for me. I knew that wouldn't be for you. I, I it's not for you either. I think you're being real know. political I mean, right now. <laughs> I think you're being real no, political. But no, 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 no. I, y'all, y'all didn't even let me get into the bag. I like the record. That don't mean that it made it makes sense on what, with what it was. I, I think, 
like I'm interested in seeing what Cardi does with a whole lot of red, like in his own space. Yeah. Um, yeah. It just the, it threw me off. It was it was like jarring to go from the transition from Drake to Cardi. Like I wasn't ready. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I heard those people. It's like I I I like and I appreciate. And then I was talking about just like the way his fa- I don't know what it is, but I'm not really sure why. Like that's the thing. I can't. I, I, no, seriously. Like I can't like pinpoint. No, I, I can't pinpoint why. But it's like. When when I find out Cardi's dropping something, I want to hear it and I want to know what yeah. it is. I don't know. Maybe it's a DJ in me. I right. don't know. It's like you know. You, you know what I would go ahead, Carl. No, you, you mentioned it was the number one song on Genius. Uh, the one thing I noticed right this morning when I looked at the charts on Spotify is that it was no longer number one. Mm-hmm. So that might be an indicator of like the way people are receiving the song. You would think that an artist of Drake's caliber and Cardi and the hype around the song, it would still be number one, but it dropped down to four. Maybe people were going to see, they're like, oh, shoot, let me go find it. Let me go find it. Let me go find it. Listen to it. And so it jumps to number one. And then they're like, oh, okay, now I know what it is. I, and I'm I, not. I, I, yeah, but it's Drake. Yeah. You, you should just be parked at number one. I love it. Yeah. And, and, and that's I love what I'm this. saying. No, you said that before too, because you was like, oh, it's a number one, but it's not a number one to Drake's yeah. standard. When you talk about two, you know how many artists would kill for a number? I don't care who standard it is. A number one is a number know. one. <laughs> Gimme. There's levels like, like though, Megan. man. I just feel. I don't know if I'm sensitive in my quarantine times, but I just feel like it's a lot of pressure and it's like, I don't know, it, it, it doesn't have anything to do with me. I'm just like, I just wish it's like somebody could like put out a project and it is what it is and we appreciate it for what it is and it doesn't become like, it's not as because it wasn't this for this many days or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, it's just hard because then I, you imagine like the artists too, they're probably constantly chasing that. And then, but what mm-hmm. it does seem like too, is if your theory, Brandon, on, um, on, on Drake wanting to see slide, not to see slide, to be <laughs> on the album and not on this tape, it seems like, although if he was reactive, it wasn't in a frantic way, you know, it was not in a all. strategic way, which, which seems mm-hmm also like you know the right move okay so let me transition and let me do it this way rather than like a a panic the numbers you know whatever it's just it just sucks that we have to like look at it that way i don't know quarantine sensitivity let me keep it all all the way a buck the project um again drake is very calculated and very strategic you we've seen how he's uh engaged his adversaries we've seen how he's engaged the the space of music and transitioning to 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 just different genres of music in his own fashion right i agree with your point um meg just because I'm I'm very much a B side kind of guy. Like I was rolling mm-hmm. with, with with the B sides. I'm very much a B side in and out kind of underground uh, fan of sorts. The Playboy Cardi record throws me. Se- se- sequencing an album or 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 or, 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 or projects—they're important, right? Cohesiveness is important. So when you throw in all these deep cut records. Uh, losses, uh, even the start of the album, the way the album album starts, it's aggressive. And then you have that up record where it takes a sharp left, where people are still trying to gravitate to what what they're supposed to take from the project. I just think it's segued a bit. I don't think that that record was supposed to, I don't think it was. So you don't think nothing was supposed to be on there? No, no, no. (laughs) No. But but then isn't that what the whole idea was then? Isn't it? Aren't they? No, but listen, y'all gotta, y'all gotta, no, man, this ain't no mixtape. Because this is one of those things where. Random songs, right? They are. They've been out for like five years. He's smart. All he's doing nah, is, yo. I mean, this isn't five years. These aren't five no. years. Not five, couple not months. five couple years. Months. I'm, couple I'm months. exaggerating. A couple Jesus months. Christ. A couple months. I'm no exaggerating. Anything. We don't know. We weren't there. Right. That's I'm true. All I'm saying is, is that with the care package, I, I feel like he tested this out with care package. You remember but, care package? But, but, care, that out? but care package was was a project that people I wanted. Know. It's I, like I, I wanted those joints because those I, were longtime favorite. Drake Bree size that didn't end up on the project. Like that didn't end up on the project. Correct. That, you wanted that. This this is Correct. something like still totally. Even though the songs had leaked a little bit before, these are still. This is still new music. We haven't like grown attached to this music in the same way that we have with the songs on on the care package. 
I, I agree. My only thing is, is that I feel like with the success of the care package, that's why he doubled up to do the, the this this project. I I also just think, like I'm saying, just with that Tootsie record, two Tootsie record rather, a Tootsie Tootsie Tootsie. I got it. I caught it. <laughs> just with the Tootsie record, I feel like it was a great way for him to save face because again, a number one, like you guys, for, for you you guys are both artists, and and Carl, you've worked with artists, right? I've worked with artists, right? The difference is you know the difference between number ones and number ones for you. A good album for you is like going gold, going platinum. But for somebody else just going platinum one time, that's like, damn, like I'm, maybe I'm slipping. But so were you, we you worried about Drake, though? Do we think he We're needed not. to save face? Like, I wasn't worried about him after it. No, Safe face feels extreme. I think. Yeah, I think. I, I think. He, I think he's testing out the waters. He's trying to figure out what the climate looks like, and that's going to be a good test. Kanye used to do the same see, thing with his with his Good Friday see. stuff. What are some of the you know one of the things about Drake? And each project, he lets you into his life in certain ways and, and gives you snapshots of what's going on. Was there any uh, like things that you guys picked up on or, or anything new we learned about Drake on this project? I'm not going to lie. It was, you know, the way, uh, Rob, that you are just on this with these the, the, the <laughs> album drops and then we have to do an episode, I'm like... I'm as prepared as I can be. I feel but at the you. same time, because I'm also in quarantine and not moving around, it's like I digest and listen to music differently. So mm. I'm trying to get so all the information good. that I need to talk about it, and I just don't know. Okay. <laughs> well, let, 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 let's talk. So let's, somebody else talk. Let, let's talk about somebody that that we all love, right? Um, and Miss and Drake kind of salutes him on on the project. Um, the late great, amazing Kobe Bryant. Um. Which, if you've seen the Jordan doc last night and seeing that scene with Kobe talking, it just tears you up, man. Mm -hmm. um, from Florida with Love, you know what I'm saying? He, he talks about Kobe, actually, right? And um, let me see if I find the line. But he's talking about Shorty Wanna Fuck, and then he says, Weezy played that shit for me and Kobe on the bus. We ain't even get to reminisce, and it was what it was. Moral of the story is the story finished us. Damn, and you know that lesson stuck. Um, which I, you know, to me was kind of like, you wouldn't even think like early in his career like that, like Drake and Kobe, obviously two greats in both of their fields. Right. And you know that they've crossed paths before, but so early in his career that Drake had had interactions with Kobe and then with all their success, like never got to reminisce on that moment. Maybe when Drake was just coming up and. You got to imagine what's in his mind if Kobe Bryant's on the tour bus and Lil Wayne's playing him lollipop and you just a fly on the wall to some sort. Mm -hmm. um, what did you think about that song in particular or the way he kind of painted that picture? For me, I, I kind of just think um, everyone's dealing with Kobe's passing differently. You know what I mean? From from a fan perspective, from an idolization perspective to just trying to cope. Like even for me, I still feel like it's very surreal. Like it doesn't feel real at times. Sometimes it's very real and sometimes it's not. I think for Drake... Um, it's it's probably one of those moments where he got a, a chance to actually sit with it and live with it and, and thought to himself, damn, like I really didn't get to live in that one moment where I was on a bus with my favorite artist and, and maybe one of my favorite basketball players and I didn't get to really live in that moment. That that probably could eat at someone. It would eat at me, to be honest, and not to be able to live in it and, and appreciate it for what it was, maybe. Sure. Um, what I got from it is that he was... I don't know how close they were, right? Remember the story that... Uh, Vanessa reached out to uh, Drake the and, and told him about the gym line, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so they clearly had a friendship. I don't know how close, but um, what I got from it is that he was finally able to address it or ready to address it because Kobe died in January. We've heard Drake since then. I'm sure some of those verses that we heard from him were more new, but he he hasn't referenced Kobe yet. So maybe that was the time where he was ready to talk about it. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Same with the, the, the robbery incident, right. right? It took him 11 years to address it. Like possibly because he had all the time to process what actually happened and with the right. this was more comfortable speaking on it. He, he's just so great at, at painting pictures. You know what I'm saying? Because um, he had talked about the robbery before in the in the GQ interview, um, and he talked. You know, he, it was a setup. So the lyric is, um, you know, he's talking about Wayne, and he says, "When it got a chain for me, I had to give it up. They had their pistols loaded, pointed at my truck." And you know that lesson stuck from that day I never touched the road without a plug. And then in GQ back in 2010, he said, I, I knew it was a setup because I had a sweater and a jacket. But when they banged on the car window with the gun and opened the door, the first thing he said was, yo, run that chain. And then he's talking about the girl he was with. They didn't rob her. 
and her purse was sitting right there. So I was like, okay, yup, you set the whole thing up. Um, mm-hmm. And it's like a, you know, when I, there's a difference between you get your car broken into, you know, it's like someone takes something, but then when you know the circumstances and then especially with whatever it is that's different about stealing someone's chain than their car or their house, you know, it's a different kind of, so I can understand it's like we hold artists to like a certain standards um, and don't really take into account sometimes how certain things may be affecting them or when they're ready to talk. Now that we're, you know, with the phones mm-hmm. and social media, it's like something happens. We're waiting for them to say something right away. And if they don't say something right away, it's like, what happened to them? Why aren't they doing this? But they don't really owe us anything to have to do that, you know? Mm-hmm. So, but I do appreciate how we 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 start to learn, you know, certain things, you know, and over time and kind of, you know, when he's him or whoever our, you know, artists are that we're listening to are kind of ready to uh to 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 talk about it, you know. Like I appreciate it that they kind of do it in their their own time. Yeah. You know, one one thing I noticed about that song too, because that's one of my favorites from the project from Florida with Love. But it also feels like it's undone to me, right? Mm-hmm. Because the two mm-hmm. verses mirror each other. Like he repeats bars in the second verse, the same thing. Like it has very much the same construction, and the second verse is shorter than the first. I kind of feel like he got that first verse off, and then the second verse he was just kind of playing with it, and it was something that maybe he would have came back to, and added on to, or fully fleshed out. And yeah. and that was like one of the songs that really gave me like demo vibes. I was like, oh, this is really like a work in progress, it felt mm-hmm. like. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But- I, I I agree with you. Um, but even that, I appreciated the record because it, I, for me, that's one of those records that's an in and out B side record. It's very intimate. It's it's personal and it's it's a believable record. Like when he's talking about that, as he's painting the picture, I'm I'm looking at the canvas and I'm looking like, damn, that's that's pretty heavy. And I understand what you're saying, Megan, because yeah, it it's different to get your car broken into. But for 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 artists, like the the last thing you need to have happen is to have a chain snatched or to get robbed mm-hmm. or something like that. Like yeah. that's like you know, it it's just, it just doesn't sit well. So I'm sure even that probably is traumatic for him in itself. It would be traumatic for anyone. So yeah, I agree with you. And, and the chain that Lil Wayne gave you at that. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I want to go back to to a lyric that he had on Pain 1993 um, because I, I'll give Drake credit for this, right? And I know um, the OVO fans, the Drake stands hate me. They swear they swear <laughs> that I hate Drake. Like you know, I feel what like saying? the like last I, time I did this with you was a Drake album too. Yeah, and you got a lot of mm. you know. Black for that. Yeah, yeah, but <laughs> nah, we just call it like it is. But I'm gonna give Drake credit for something on, on Pain 1993. He says, "Ain't nobody making too much money off the beef stuff, but I beef with a rapper because I'm never with the sweet stuff." You know, the one thing I, I give Drake credit for, I give him credit for a lot of things. But one of the things I give Drake credit for is he ain't afraid to mix it up. You know, even with the Pusha T thing, and even he admitted that mm-hmm. was a loss for him, right, in the battle. Mm-hmm. But he's still engaged. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and through the years, I, I think we got to give Drake a little more credit for engaging. Like, he engaged with Common, and Common started with him. Like, mm-hmm. he engaged with Common, you know, the Tiger thing, like, um, Meek, of course, everybody remembers. Like, he's not afraid to mix it up. And with that lyric, I'm like, oh, you know what? Post push a T battle, he still might have another one in him. Like he's not. He's like I'm with I don't the think show. he's gonna be gunshot. Let, <laughs> let me let me be clear. Drake don't get enough credit. Uh, writing rumors aside, uh, that boy's pen is something different. He is the same person that gets called in to write for people, and he's the, also the person that is quick to to engage. I like even we we talked about the pusher thing. I think again, he him acknowledging that hey this this was an L, but not on my accord. You could see it still burns him up from time to time that he 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 can't even engage right. Right now, like he's still a competitor. I just think again, the powers that be are saying, "Hey, uh, you you need to chill." And and so for him, he's got to chill, and, and it, it eats at him. That's the part that I respect about it. Like, cause mm-hmm. he admits the loss. Maybe he hadn't quite owned up to it. But the fact, and this sounds weird, but the fact that you could tell that the loss still bothers him mm-hmm. shows to me as as a rapper, as an MC, as as somebody within this field of hip hop, you still care. About that, mm-hmm. like that shit is still important to you. Hundred percent. And no matter how 100%. many number ones you get, I still want to compete. Yeah. I respect that. Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yo, you, you, you got where to. Comes from though, man. This dude is a underground. Like he's an underground guy. Like he's slum village little brother. Like he loves that stuff. That's those were his mm-hmm. early inspirations. And um, I agree with you, Brandon. Like he he gets knocked 
for, for being so big and being a pop star, but I think people try to discredit his um his lyricism. Or like, mm. they're like, yeah, he can rap, but he's, he's not rapping on that tier. Like, nah, like Drake is really about those bars. I would go as far as to say that, and I will never name names. Say it, go ahead. <laughs> but, but, what is that called? <laughs> I will never name names, but if you were to compare Drake to some of the, the lyricists that we revere, in previous eras, <laughs> I don't know. I think like he's better than oh, a lot oh, of people. In, in like previous who, eras, you say? Uh, yeah. I, okay. Are you crazy? I'm just curious. Listen, Megan, Megan, we're not doing I'm just that. We can, do we can do the off the hey, record. Listen. We can do the off yeah, the record I, combo. But, but can, we, can we get him to say ah, that? Can we edit that clip right there, right after he gives yeah. us the and put it on Instagram? <laughs> <laughs> Political you're not going to be able to get my voice, though. Hey, listen, Carl, you 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 could be political because you're on Spotify. I agree with you. I think Drake can clean up a lot of old school rappers and present rappers. And I'm talking lyricists. Drake can right. rap. He's one of the people that is, I would be worried about, not only from a, a delivery perspective, but also from a strategic, tactical uh, uh, perspective. Think about how he engaged the whole Meek situation. Like, he was relentless. He had a whole plan. Like, he had charity ba baseball games, like, with charged up shirts. So, like, that's a lot. That's a right. lot. Especially when you don't know the climate. Well, how he, he, long yeah. has Drake been been on top? How many, how long has it been? Over a decade, right? It's Just easily about. over a decade. Right. Easily. So, what I appreciate and what I, I love about him is that his hunger has never left. You know, normally when mm -hmm. artists get to that, uh, that point, you know, we've seen it with some of our faves all of a sudden you start <clears throat> seeing, you know, the re reviews and the albums and it's like, is he going to come back from this? Like, what was he thinking? Like, he's lost, like, there's not the same hunger as the, 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 the debut album till now. It's a different kind mm -hmm. of artist, you know? So I feel like Drake has done an amazing job at, 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 evolving, staying true to himself, but evolving and growing with his fans and then still having the same kind of hunger as you were saying, Rob, that he like, you know, he still wants this and he respects it. And he's like a student of the, the game still too. So. Yeah. You, you know, know, I think so. And like, like I said, I've been critical of, of, of some of the things, obviously, like we've talked about it on this show before, but you know, I, I can't question the, the, the hunger that he has and that guy's desire to be the top guy, not just on the chart, but he wants to be regarded as the as the top lyrical guys, oh, all those guys that you respect, oh, watch this. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And 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 mm -hmm. you know, I I think that raises the bar. You know, win, lose, or draw, any battle, it raises the bar. Like you can't go and and battle Drake thinking it's gonna be sweet. You know what I'm well, saying? That's, like, that's the other thing too. I think now anyone who even attempts to try to approach Drake better oh. be very, very <laughs> careful. <laughs> whoever, whoever's next, because it's because it's like, look, man, nobody took the L. I'm not. Yeah, I, yeah. We're not gonna lose back to back. So yeah, no, you, you no. Gotta, you no, got to tiptoe around that guy. Yeah, yeah. You no, got to tiptoe no, around I, that I, guy for a while. If if I'm an artist, <laughs> and and especially just seeing his energy right now, like seeing how he's talking about certain things and still you know, caught up into a lot of it, I would be very, very cautious as an artist to say anything about him. He's in album mode. We already, we already know how he is in, in album mode. But again, he's coming off a loss. He has something to prove. So yeah, if I'm an artist, I would chill. Spe speaking, of, speaking of album mode and speaking of, of, of beefs or, or, or things, you know, he, he squashed one on war. He talks about him and Weekend, right? Like they had, mm -hmm. there's always been like a cold war between Drake and The Weeknd. And, you know, one of the lyrics on war, which was previous release, you know, and he said, and that boy that sound like he sang on Thriller, you know, that's been my, yeah, we had to fix things, family things, six things, mm -hmm. we can't split up. So now that maybe Weekend and Drake are kind of like back in lockstep, could we get a collaboration, you think, on this album, man? That, like when we talk about the standard, right, and the number ones that he's used to, and you've seen what Weekend did with mm -hmm. his album, you know, releasing it when, when the label even was telling him not to, and people weren't sure because of this pandemic. And you know, you've seen he the dominance, the chart dominance that he had. I feel like a Drake weekend collaboration could really like do some damage right now. You think we might get that for the album? What's the last one we had was um Crew Love? F Crew Love. That's Crew the last love time a day together? That's the last yeah. time. Wow. 2011? I'm 2011. here for it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The rumor mill because of mm -hmm. that whole 
relationship quarrel thing that they had. That's why they had that whole. I don't even out. think and I know I, what it was about. I just always hear the the sneak little. It's all rumors. Right. Yeah, the little the little rumors. You never know what it yeah. is, but I think um I think if I'm keeping it a buck, I think the weekend early on um probably saw some things uh from the OVO side. Maybe it could be it could have been uh, how artists were handled or marketing, and probably saw that he wanted to go otherwise. Uh, you know, a different direction, and because of that, I think that that's partially. What what maybe cause a little bit of friction in their relationship, but I think Drake respects him enough. He's one of the artists where Drake really does still want to reach out and say, "Hey, let's work. Let whatever it is, let's figure it out. We make great music together." I think that that relationship is pure, almost in the same similarity as how he views uh, Wayne. Not obviously of the same regard because he looks at you know as Wayne as a god, but I think he respects the weekend. I think for us as fans, if we were to be able to get that as a project or even just Two records, I would take. I would be ecstatic about it. I think that would be do wonders for hip hop and for both of their careers. I honestly think that for their city too. Right. Yes, hundred uh-huh. percent. Most importantly, the city. Most importantly, uh-huh. the city. To, to, right now, Toronto has it. When you think about it, Toronto has it just Tory. because of Drake. We not Tory, Dra- uh, the Drake. weekend. Uh, there's there's another guy that I, I just found uh, who I'm sure is going to blow out of Toronto. He's amazing, but like. Mm-hmm. They're, that city, if they were to, but that's just like most cities. Like think about when Atlanta came through and and and, and crushed this, like the entire music industry was just nothing but like southern music. So is this the Toronto, side to D four L talking about Atlanta? Did you like that record? Everybody thought it was gonna be. Remember when we saw we saw the track listing and everybody felt like it was gonna be like a laffy taffy sample yeah. or something like that. Yeah, um, no, but I appreciate. First of all, Fabo gets. Bad respect, though, like for start, because it's like I always hear him mm-hmm. getting shout out and a lot of stuff. And I just, you know, again, like I, I try to, you know, it's, it's difficult because we work in the industry. So, you know, whether in whatever regards, you know, and then as a, as, as a DJ, it's like I have a tendency of listening to, to listening to music and, and, and hearing music in a certain way. And then I have to take a step back and try to be like, OK, let me reset and listen to it as like a fan versus mm-hmm. as a as a as a DJ and for the reasons. But um, a thing that I've, I've said before, and there are certain artists that I appreciate because, you know, it's like I've, I've grown with them. So to hear, I remember that whole D4L phase because I had just started DJing around that time. So mm-hmm. I remember all the set, you know, so just even even though it wasn't a sample of that or you didn't hear like t- anything like that, I still like a- a- appreciate it and just thought it was it was it was super dope for them to, mm-hmm. you know, to do that. Um it just made me like I, I when I was looking at the track list, I listened to like I really like Deep Pockets. I might be one of the only. Me like, too. I don't me, know. No, no, I'm no, like that's, nobody. That's one of my favorite records. I, one of my me, favorite records. It took me like ten listens to get past Deep Pockets. I was like, okay, I'm just gonna call yeah. this this whole mixtape Deep Pockets because I'm not gonna go past that. So right. I went from yeah. Deep Pockets <laughs> to to D4L just because I wanted to hear it and then went back so I could like listen all the way through. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, it was yeah. funny. My my, my home girl texted me, was just like, yo, I just want to check to see how you was doing. I was listening to Drake Deep Pockets and it reminded me of you. And I don't I don't know what that means. I, I, I don't know whether to be afraid. I don't know whether to be that, flattered. No, that's, be, that, like, that's, that, you, you, should, you should be flattered. You should be flattered. I, uh, Deep Pockets <laughs> to me is one of my favorite records on this project. Mm-hmm. As soon as you come, as soon as it right. comes, that, so that record come is hard, man. As soon as it comes on, I already knew what it was. That record is right. phenomenal. Nah, nah, yeah, no, he mm-hmm. definitely said it. But Drake is good at, like that too. He always sets off projects. Like I always feel like the first mm-hmm. track like the Starting opening credits to his album is is is, is all right. Starting that, no one no one ends a project better than him. Name me an artist that ends a project better with him with that last record. Right. Yeah, you was playing Fear when we when we jumped on before we got on stage. Like Fear was playing. Yeah. Speakers. Like, I'm I'm gonna send y'all a little B side playlist I made of his. Like forty records. Yo yo. Brandon, I feel like you are very prepared for this conversation. <laughs> oh, nah. <laughs> and we nah. we we are going to your head. Let, let's go. Let's, I, I did not dance for the record. Can, 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 I, can I be honest? I'll be honest for the record. Um, and, and Rob knows this. I'm a hip hop fan, but not yeah. not only. I'm very I'm very critical of Drake because I like Drake. I've I've met uh-huh. him. I've spoken to him. I've you know what I mean. So for for me, the same way um, you you say you know you've grown with artists. I uh-huh. believe, I feel the same way. Like yeah. I've seen him literally. Coming to Joe's birthday party to Tahiri being this kid in jean jackets, no facial hair, to just being this megastar and super cool. You know what I mean? So for me, like I, I try to prepare for for those comments for the for for conversations like this when I know I'm gonna be critical mm-hmm. and I know that maybe they're gonna have some unpopular opinions, but it's it's, it's real shit. And I think yeah. he's I just think he's phenomenal and he deserves the attention. All right. 
Let, let's go. Let's go. Closing thoughts for 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 this project and and what do we expect next from Drake? Because you know the pressure's on. He can't give him no more appetizers, right? Like like we no. can't get a. Yeah, it's <laughs> we over. Can't get a demos too, right? Like why not? Yeah. Then he could revert and do something. <laughs> demos he too. Could, he could do whatever he wants. More more leaks. More, more leaks. leaks. More, <laughs> more leaks. That's what's gonna be called. More leaks. More more leaks for your head top. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh man, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll just say that uh, I, I think the project is good. Uh, I agree with you, Rob. The pressure's on now. You 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 put out the 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 music. You put out the records. They did what they were supposed to do, and now it's it's album time. Especially when you've given the date and said, "Yo, I'm locking in. I'm I'm doing it." The album's got to be what it is. You're teasing records online. You're trolling people. It's this is great. This is a perfect rollout to me. I, I was going back and forth on whether or not to judge this as like a an actual project or something else i still don't have a conclusion but um i'll be honest when i ran it front to back leaks or not i was like "Eh." but the more i ran it back the more i was like i like this song i like that one i like this and i'm like wait (laughs) if if i was to count i think i have more favorable uh, favorable reviews than not so especially on the bar side because there's a lot of songs where he's mostly rapping which is the drake that i like so me liking this project now I'm expecting a great body of work. That's what I want next. Because I do think that that's been something that's been, um, uh, we, we have split opinions on when is the last time Drake dropped the body of work that we all loved. I think. Well, it, it, can I ask you which Scorpion. one you don't? Oh, Scorpion. I, I think the last one that has close to universal acclaim is if you're reading this. If you're reading this, probably, yeah. Yeah, because I didn't like... Remember I said I, there's one that I just did not... I was not a fan of More Life. More Life, yeah. I was more, not... I was not and I feel like I feel like there was pressure neither. after that one. I feel like now everyone... I feel like after that one, it was kind of like, okay, I need to... But that was a playlist, remember? It's more like... Oh, see? Very deliberate. Very deliberate with the messaging. So Check. if you're giving this to me as a... A, a, a mixtape, then I, I I'm hoping that he could combine but, like a lot of the things that we've loved, like those those hit singles, yeah. the, those big moments that that anchor the project, but also like make a, a co- cohesive body of work. But 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 he'll take yeah. the number one. It's a playlist. Of course. It's a, it's of a course. demo tape. It's a mixtape. But I'm gonna take the number, number one, one when Billboard hands it out. Um, yeah, I kind of felt like that. Like it's hard to judge. I don't judge this as an album. If I'm judging it as an album, it doesn't stand up. You know what I'm saying? I, I think if you take it for what it is, they're like cool moments for fans. You know what I'm saying? And and, mm-hmm. and I, I kind of agree what's being said is, is the rap moments are my favorite. Like Deep Pockets, When to Say When. I thought Chicago Freestyle was dope. Not You Too. I wish I had more Chris Brown on it, especially after what they did on No yeah. Guidance. Yeah, I listened back. Dope. I was like, did I miss it? Yeah. yeah. Chris That's is like, I I was like lightly, lightly peppered <laughs> into the background. Um, Losses I like from Florida with Love. I, I fuck with. Um, it'll be interesting, and, and Megan, especially you know you man, a, a DJ holding New York down. What demons is gonna do with with, with Fabio? Yeah, you know. <laughs> so so we were going through and is that, what what? Oh, what was I that? didn't say anything. I just laughed. What is that? What is that from LA? I'm sorry, I have this Los Angeles <laughs> T-shirt on. Um, no, that was one of the ones that you know when we were going through. You know, what was I? You know, going to get ready to add and stuff for you know the DJs and because you know it's like when now if you know we had this problem. I don't want to say a problem, but when you know the baby dropped, it was what's going to be the single. And so we have to go listen and go through and kind of like pick. And then even with this project, it was like, okay, we dropped what's going to be the single. Because when he had originally leaked those other ones, you know, he had the label literally tell me, those aren't singles. Those aren't singles. Something else is coming out. Those aren't singles. Just eh. And I'm like, all right. So then when this is out, it's like, now what's the single? So, you know, when we went through and was picking, okay, which, which ones, you know, obviously, um, Especially, you know, it's big for the the city, Fabio and and, and Sosa Geek on that record. So um, that's definitely one that you know we're going to be supporting for sure, for sure, Carl, for sure. Cool. I, I was I was just reacting to Demon Time. That's it. <laughs> that was <laughs> Demon that's Time it. is having a moment, man. Shit, I'm a man, Justin Leboy, man. I saw something. He's like, everyone's a Demon now. Is all. <laughs> hey, man. Good good week for them. Shout, shout out to Justin Leboy too, man. Um, word. All right, yo. 
I had fun with y'all, man. It, it really, y'all definitely gave me insight because I didn't know what to make of this. Like it was kind of like again, just like how, how do you treat this? How you know? At I the end of the day, just, it's music. I think we it's should a, just relax in quarantine time. Just listen and relax and just I, love it. You know. I got, I got to make content, man. I got to. Yeah. Let's go. From my yeah. bedroom. Yeah, I gotta kill. I, I gotta kill this shit left and right. <laughs> I'm, like, ah, I'm like, everybody, just take it for what it is. <laughs> nah, but I appreciate y'all joining us, Carl. Particularly you. Um, it's 7 a.m. over mm-hmm. in the West Coast where you're at, but you're a New Yorker, so I don't, I don't feel too bad, man. Put your Tim's on, you'll be all right. My initial plan was to take a nap right after this, but I'm gonna no. call Megan right yeah, after. Yeah, I was this. gonna say you call Megan right after. You owe me a phone call, sir. <laughs> I appreciate y'all once again. Thank you. I appreciate y'all for watching. Leave whatever y'all think in the comments. Y'all know I talk back all the time. Y'all gonna call me a Drake hater like y'all always do, but I don't think y'all be paying attention, man. I only criticize Drake because I love him. That's it, man. This is for the record. Thank you for watching. Peace.